Hey, it's Jim, and this is level three of the CFA program, a constructed response set on the topic of portfolio construction. Our focus will be on learning module one, overview of equity portfolio management. There are the four LOSs that we'll cover. I probably don't need to remind you of what the roles of equities are in an overall portfolio. We've been doing that since level one. Um, segmentation of the equity manager's investment universe. Remember, this goes back years and years and years. We can segment by size and style. We can segment by geography. We can segment by economic activity. And then inside of each of those segments, we can use, you know, factor-based analysis or thematic analysis or a bunch of other stuff. Types of income and costs. Our focus will be on trading costs. Remember, we've got management fees, administrative fees. We have marketing and distribution costs, and we have trading costs, not least of which is the bid-ask spread out there. And so the last part of that LOS will address the potential effects on portfolio performance. And then uh, the last question, we'll talk about shareholder engagement since we're going to be an actively managed fund manager, then we need to decide, do we want to engage uh, with the companies in which we invest or we're thinking of investing? Um, my take on this is really just a trade-off. Um, you know, a shareholder wants to become active. That's probably a signal that the firm is not performing the way it wants to. So the big benefit, of course, is accountability. But the cost is that, you know, a lot of people do this. A lot of investors do this just to get their names in the Wall Street Journal. Uh, sometimes it's a waste of time. So like we have uh, uh, all the time, it's, uh, it's a trade-off. Let's go ahead and begin this case by looking at the questions first, and then we'll get to the details of the case. So question one, uh, let's see, fund's primary objective, which we don't know yet, we'll be told that in a minute, determine which of the three investment options would be most appropriate. So what we'll have to do there is we'll have to link, you know, some kind of an objective, whatever that is, and let me go back here real quick, you know, types of income, you know, so do we want lots of dividends? Do we want capital appreciation? So we'll have to link that with whatever those three options uh, might turn out to be. Question two, uh, which of the three segmentation approaches? So I just did that uh, just a second ago. Uh, most critical cost factor for question three, and then we're gonna have to justify our answer. And then following benefits are most important. So think about this. Sounds to me like I just went and uh, gave you a good summary of this learning module one with these four LOSs and then a review of these four questions. And that's probably true. But uh, let's be careful. What we don't what we don't address in this recording is the uh, relationship between you know the equity portfolio and benchmarking. So what I want you to do as soon as this uh, recording is over, I want you to go to the end of this learning module, and I think there are eleven or twelve questions. The first you know eight or nine we pretty much cover, but then the last one is on benchmarking. So I want you to do that. So you'll cover the uh, cover the entire learning module. All right, you ready? So here we have Avalon Asset Management. New product, Avalon Global Growth Fund. If I were taking the exam, I might circle the word global there and I might highlight uh, the word growth. All right, billion dollars. So we're not a small, uh, we're not a small investment firm. Primary objective is, all right, here we go. Aggressive capital appreciation over a 10 year uh, horizon, targeting high growth companies across global markets. So that sentence or two right there, I think that's key in answering at least one of the questions, if not, uh, if not a handful. All right, so here are those three investment options to form the core of the portfolio. Remember, this is not the entire portfolio, but just, just the core. A basket of emerging market tech stocks. So what do we know about tech stocks? They're probably high growth. What do we know about emerging markets? There's probably lots of risk, but they're probably uh, high growth. So we're probably not going to get too many dividends out of that. So let's go back here. What does this say? Aggressive capital appreciation over a 10-year horizon. Well, that's probably the correct answer there. How about this? A selection of developed market pharmaceutical companies. 
you know, a couple of things there, right? Do we want the core to be, I mean, let's go back here. We're not calling this the Avalon Global Growth Pharmaceutical Sector Fund. So maybe, maybe selected uh, pharmaceutical companies with promising drug pipelines. That sounds like uh, something that has high growth, but it's probably on the periphery. We don't want to focus on that because of the, uh, you know, systematic versus unsystematic risk, all that good stuff that we've talked about. And global renewable energy companies uh, have a couple of things to say about that. I'll, I'll, I'll wait until we get to, uh, to the question. All right, here's the question on segmentation. So we're going to have to link the segmentation choice with you know who invests in our fund so we're told up at the top there young professionals in their 30s it doesn't sound like me i'm not young i don't even know if i'm a professional <laughs> clearly i'm uh, i'm twice that in my 30s uh high risk tolerance so that's probably a key there so that links remember i use that term link that links back to what we were saying with the goal all right so what are our choices here Traditional market cap segmentation, small, mid, large cap. Factor-based segmentation, ah, value, growth, there's that word growth again, quality, momentum, or some kind of a theme there, clean energy, which we talked about just a second ago, and then biotech. Ah, recent market volatility, fund has been averaging 150% annual turnover. When I take my students to, uh, we have the Morningstar software in our finance trading lab, and every semester in investments, I take them to Morningstar, and we do all sorts of fun stuff. And we find a fund that has 100% annual turnover. And I say, what does that mean? And I get some good answers out there, but I say, this is what it means. It means that if you have a fund that has 100 stocks, at the beginning of the year. And at the end of the year, that fund has 100 stocks, but every one of them is different. That's 100% annual turnover. So 150% annual turnover, I don't even, I mean, that's like so far out there. So that's, uh, uh, that's significantly higher than its peers. We're not surprised to read about that. Let's see, we use some in-house research and external services from three major investment banks. Now, we don't talk about this in this particular recording, but you know, using third-party services out there, remember that we're obligated with the code and all those professional standards, somewhere in there, we're obligated when we hire this third party out there to make sure that they do all the same kind of stuff that we do uh, inside, that they can be trustworthy and accountable and honesty and integrity and all that good stuff. Now, I, I guess, I'm guessing from our choice of three major investment banks, that, that probably takes care of all of that stuff. But don't be surprised on the exam if you get a question where, we're using three major investment banks, and then we're also using, hey, Jim's tiny bank over there, and we don't know anything about Jim, but we think he's good, but who knows what the heck Jim is doing over there. We're also considering implementing uh, artificial intelligence, hefty licensing fee, so we're worried about, uh, we're worried about those costs. Uh, shareholder engagement. So the fund manager is unsure how to balance. So this is why I did the, uh, the trade-off thing earlier. Aggressive growth mandate and high turnover strategy. All right, so here are the four questions again. Let's go ahead and start with uh, question one. Determine which of the three investment options would be most appropriate. And I think I gave you kind of a signal about which one, uh, which one we like. Yeah, that option A best aligns with the fund's primary. Was that primary objective, right? Uh, aggressive capital appreciation, 10 years horizon. So that sounds an awful lot like emerging market tech stocks offer high. So this is the core, right? This is the core. Um, why are B and C probably less appropriate here? Notice that our uh, constructed answer. It does offer growth potential, but it's in the developed market. So there's more moderate growth. So we could probably find higher growth in these emerging markets out there. And then if we're going to go to the renewable sector, then we always have to worry about uh, governments because governments could come in and say, well, let's take the picture over there on the right. Governments could come in and say, you know what? We love windmills. And so what we're going to do is we're going to give tremendous tax breaks to companies that uh, produce windmills. And then we're going to give 
tax breaks to electric companies and then we're going to give tax breaks to people you know so that oh my gosh that sounds like uh that we might be super interested but then and those of you who live in the united states you know this that uh every once in a while in the wall street journal you'll read hey the wind farm that was planned outside in the ocean in front of i won't mention any states you know this particular state has been shut down because the people who live there they don't want to look out and see a windmill so you got to worry about uh political risk and regulation risk and authoritative bodies and all that. So the point here is that those renewable energy companies, they've got lots of growth potential. And so they're probably going to form, you know, maybe the outside circuit, but not the core because um, the authoritarian bodies out there are going to dent, dent that growth. All right. Which of the three segmentation appropriate, uh, uh, approaches would be most appropriate here. Well, we probably ruled out uh, the thematic one. Um, uh, the first one we're not quite too terribly sure about, but based on what we know about factor-based segmentation and factor analysis, you know, going back to what we did in level in level two with all of that really really good stuff with uh, cross-sectional regressions and. Uh, maybe not so much time series regressions, but you can do all sorts of fun stuff in there. Uh, aggressive growth objective, what we can do is we can say something like, all right, we're going to assign a factor of growth to these firms. You know, we use some statistical analysis out there and then we can identify those firms in a particular segment that have the highest potential for growth. So once again, this aligns with what we're saying earlier. Yeah, traditional kind of segmentation, it may find and locate some growth drivers, but probably not what we want in terms of the core. And then the thematic invested, that's on sustainability and impact rather than uh, capital appreciation. Yeah, what about the most crucial cost factor? This was the high turnover rate. Right? This is why I made a big deal about uh, the Morningstar in, in my classes. So frequent buying and selling, man, that's substantial transaction costs. Notice there's the bid ask spread that I was talking about earlier. Remember bid ask spreads, they widen when there is a greater information advantage and or disadvantage out there. And so those are what we know that bid ask spreads, they're higher in the emerging market universe than they are on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. So clearly, clearly we need to manage those costs and reduce those through optimizing the turnover rate, more efficient trading algorithms. And there's our longer term investment horizon. So you think about uh, what, did I, what word did I use earlier? Linkage or linking. You know, we've got this 10 year plan, 10 year goal of capital appreciation. And yet we're turning uh, we're turning the portfolio over 150 percent of the time. That sounds like those two things are not in conjunction and are not linked. And finally, talking about this shareholder engagement. So in the actual question a little bit ago, uh, we didn't mention our our four choices here. So let's think about this influencing growth strategy. So what do we want to do as the fund manager? Do we want to actively engage and go uh, to the annual meeting and say, uh, why don't you pursue growth strategies? Do we want to do risk management? Do we want to do information advantage? Or do we want to uh, pursue corporate governance improvement? Well, all of these are really, really great choices. But the question is, which one is the most important? And so this goes back to the linkage term that I've been using. So influencing growth strategies. So if we're in the tech industry, if we're in the high growth industry, what we want to do is attend these annual meetings. And there are a host of other ways that we can become shareholderly engaged. But what we can do is we can say something like, oh, you're doing this? Well, how about this? This is growth. Uh, this is high growth. Yeah, so what is this going to do? It's going to help us ensure sustainability, long-term growth, sustainable long-term growth. Remember that back at level one, level two, level three in my recordings, I always say something like, look, what's the goal of the business? Maximize shareholder wealth. We, we know that. How do we do that? We find projects that have positive NPVs characterized by high 
sustainable operating cash flows. And remember, when I always use that term sustainable, I say things like, you know, the goal is brand name. So we're going to try to find these companies throughout the world that have product lines that have the potential for brand names. That links us to a 10-year investment horizon. Yeah, risk management, this is important. But if we're pursuing high growth, then we can just slip this in there, right? There's the Jerry Seinfeld. Do you remember that show where uh, the, the girl just slips into George that uh, she has a boyfriend? So you could slip it in the meeting that you could say something like, you know what? We want you to per pursue these high risks, uh, the high growth strategies. And of course, we want you to man manage that risk. Uh, information. Uh, objective. That's probably for uh, strategic growth uh, initiatives. That's important, but that's going to be another slipping in. And corporate governance, what do we want? Well, you know, we want efficiency on the board of directors. So we want lots and lots of highly qualified experts in their field and tertiary fields. So, you know, they can add value. I mean, you've heard me say that before in, the, in our board of director conversations that we want a board that comes from lots and lots of different backgrounds, but every individual has to add value. And so it's a marginal cost, marginal benefit kind of a deal. All right, so what did I say to you earlier? I wanted to, uh, I want you to go right now. Don't even do anything. I want you to go to the questions. It's the last case uh, at the end of this learning module. And it's on the benchmarking and indexing. And so once you do, once you do this one and that one, you should be pretty covered for, for this learning module. So, hey, hey, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Good luck studying.